Good Saturday morning, everybody. Just past the top of the 9 o'clock hour, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. A little bit late this morning thanks to some connection issues. Apologies for that, but we are now on and going and ready to inform you as to what's happening. Daybreak finishing up a little bit earlier this morning, but we're going to have a busy afternoon and quite possibly evening as well into parts of the Mid-South as we see the potential of severe weather out there. Now, once again, as a professional meteorologist, I don't hype the weather. I never have. I never will. This is our explanation to you as to what could possibly happen for tonight. So for those of you who have a problem with the idea that you think that I'm hyping stuff or that the station does, there's the email address right there. I'd be glad to chat with you on that at some point in time. But in the meantime, this is me helping you to explain, to get a little bit more information about what's going on with the weather. There is a potential of severe weather. It doesn't mean to panic. Panic never helps anybody. Being prepared for stuff, on the other hand, being an Eagle Scout, I know that phrase very well. It is something, again, to get ready for so that you are set and moving into position so that you know what needs to be done should something happen later on tonight. And that is possible. So forethought ahead is a very good idea. And that's what we're going to help you a little bit more with here in just a little bit. This is not going to be your typical, again, weather forecast for here. We're going to be uh, kind of switching back and forth on several things. So the computer screen back here may go a little wibbly wobbly at times. But we'll We'll get back to everything. We'll kind of jump back and forth, kind of depending on your questions for right now. Uh, thanks a lot for everybody for checking in this morning. Drop your locations into and around the area. Uh, Dustin Brumfeld, cell phones and radios charge. Very good. 73 KD5 LAP from KG4GKE. Thank you very much, sir. Do appreciate that. What we're going to be looking at for again later on tonight is going to be the heaviest weather coming in later on. So what we've got again for the rest of the day, thunderstorms could pop up at just about any time. It doesn't look like anything in the way of severe weather until we get into around later on this evening. This is what we're going to be seeing again across much of the area at this time. Uh, Eureka Springs, Mississippi, 68. April Hentz, thank you very much uh, for that one. Let's see, Boy Scout Troop 73, Camp Courier this weekend, Allison Kirk McCormick. I hope everybody uh, stays safe down that direction and keeps an eye on the sky for right now. What we've got is some very mild weather coming up. Temperatures way above normal. We were above normal yesterday. Didn't set a record, but we came pretty doggone close. And today we're going to be back in that same territory, although I don't think it's going to be record-breaking. If you've got outdoor plans, travel, Boy Scout troops that are at Camp Courier uh, going out for that grocery run before the stores get too crowded, whatever else you've got going on, you're going to have to plan ahead for, again, the possibility of more rainfall. And again, if there's thunder out there, you need to get back inside as soon as possible. As I was talking to the school groups at the Pink Palace yesterday about lightning safety, again, something to really consider that if you can see lightning or hear thunder, you are within range of getting struck by lightning. The odds of it might be a little long, but it is still possible. Matter of fact, you have a better chance of getting struck by lightning than winning the lottery. So consider that next time you're outdoors during a thunderstorm. Now let's go ahead and take a look, a quick look at what's going on around much of the area. 67 in Tunica, Cordero Meadows. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, thank you very much. Two-point typeface and bifocals just do not work well together. And thanks to everything else uh, into the Mid-South for right now. A uh, few scattered showers around Heidelberg Elementary in Clarksdale. Not seeing, again, a lot of visibility problems, but a lot of cloudy skies and a lot of just speckly rainfall for the most part. Not slowing down the traffic at I-240 in Poplar. Some rain on the camera lens at this point, and we'll continue to see that. And you can also see that, again, the roadway is a little bit more reflective. It's a little lighter than what you usually see for that dark asphalt. So the roadways here are damp or wet, so we'll continue to see that. That means that your friction between your car tire and the roadway surface is not going to be as much, so you're going to have to slow it down, extend your braking distance, slow your speed down, because braking on wet roadways is not the same as braking on dry roadways. So please keep that in mind if you are traveling today. Live view from I-40 in Witten Road. Traffic moving along, visibility a little low thanks to some light drizzle and some low clouds, but really not much beyond that. Forgot to mention, if you want to check out the forecast without listening in on all of this, you can check out the forecast down here in the blue bar or go to this website, wreg.com slash weather. Just past the top of the hour, 10 minutes in fact, past the top of the hour, we've got some light scattered showers out there. We're getting the occasional stronger echoes showing up, but that's the amount of rainfall starting to increase. Higher echoes, heavier rainfall, 
have better signatures bouncing back to the radar site. So that's why we're seeing this here. We're not seeing any hail potential or anything else for now, but we are seeing again these areas of yellow and orange starting to show up, which indicates that these showers are getting stronger. They're starting to get a little bit more strength. Now, the one thing that's going to help us today is the fact that the entire area has been saturated. We've gotten tons of rainfall, and that rain a little bit has helped to cool the air off just above the surface. Now, that will maybe kind of stifle the thunderstorms from becoming too strong. I'm not going to, again, bet all the marbles on that one because of the fact that if the storm system coming in with the energy that it has, the instability in the atmosphere, that could help to overpower that. The cool conditions down toward the surface where the rain has been, that might actually temper the thunderstorms maybe by just a little bit. At least that's the hope anyway. But again, we're not going to pin all of our hopes on that. We need to be ready for some stronger weather coming up into and around much of the area. Thanks to everybody else who's checking in for right now. Uh, Beverly Elliott Carter going to a wedding in Bono, Arkansas at 4 o'clock. What's the weather going to be doing? Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Not looking all that good. I hope that's not an outdoor wedding uh, that you're talking about at this point in time. Uh, Robin Reagan will be live on Facebook during stormy weather. I have talked to uh, my supervisor, Tim Simpson, and I've left notes for our news director. I would like to be able to do that. Uh, unfortunately, at this point in time, it's going to be kind of difficult because I need to kind of split the difference, so to speak. I need to be here uh, in front of the camera for the Facebook, and then I need to be on the chroma key wall about 10 feet that way. So if I walk off screen, you're probably not going to be able to hear me over there. So I'd like to, but I don't have any guarantees that's going to be happening. But if we can do that, we'll try to find a way to get that done. So thank you very much uh, for suggesting that. Lisa Macarino, Macarino from Millington, raining at that location. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Good morning from Bartlett. Bernice Cherzen Cornmesser, hope I'm saying that correctly. Weather makes everybody nervous. Well, again, it's nothing to be scared of. It's just something to be prepared for in here. That's the main thing. Michelle, all day, is it going to rain tomorrow in Memphis? Technically, yes. It's going to be very late tonight, early Sunday morning. So technically, yes, on Sunday. But we'll show you that in the forecast coming up here in just a little bit. A few of those scattered showers, again, driving around the Mid-South for just a little bit if my cursor will do what's necessary. There we go. Seeing some heavier rainfall again right around Salisbury into and around the area close to uh, Grand Junction. It looks like north of Walnut, Middleton, Hickory Valley picking up more of a shower there. We've got a lot more rainfall over and across portions of eastern Arkansas. And once again, these are just this is nothing. This is showers only, and there's not much of anything else going on. Oh, uh, scratch that. We do have, it looks like, one thunderstorm developing uh, down to around just outside of the viewing area. Phillips County, Marvell, Arkansas. There's some lightning markers starting to show up, so we are starting to see a few pop-up thunderstorms out there. So it's a good possibility we'll be seeing more of that. And looking back farther to the southwest, we have... West Central and Southwest Arkansas, the Arklatex area, as it's called, back to around Oklahoma. Some really neat geographical names back here. And just uh, south, right around the area of Ola Roper, southwest of Russellville, around the Dardanelles. I used to work back in Fort Smith, so I know this area pretty well. And more thunderstorms developing here. Also down around Star City, Dumas, El Dorado, picking up some more thunderstorms. So we're starting to see some of that development taking place. It just hasn't quite reached the Mid-South at this point in time. Again, mainly what we're looking at for right now is just light scattered showers, and that's about all that we have at this point in time. Uh, you land at Jackson, review the timeline. Yeah, we'll talk about that coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Carol Gaudet, hope I'm saying that right, driving to Jackson for a Neil McCoy show later this afternoon. Will the weather be safe or should I cancel? I can give you the weather. I cannot make any recommendations regarding your personal actions. Legally, I cannot do that. So I'll give you the weather, but af anything after that is your own decision to make on uh, stuff like that. So thank you very much. Not raining in Chestnut Bluff, Tennessee. Sheila Gilliland, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, going to rain in Corinth. Mary Pruitt, we'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. Uh, Grady Bennett, spotter activation, headed, uh, heated today. So you haven't heard anything yet. No, I have not heard anything at this point in time either, but very a good possibility we are going to see that. So Skywarn spotters, you should be on notice that this is going to be happening. 
uh, into and around the area for uh, later on. Let's see, let's give that. It's, it's my wife checking in with me. Just want to make certain everything's okay for right now. As of the current time, again, everybody in the Mid South is under a flood watch, with the exception of Lafayette County and Oxford. Even if I lived here, once again, I would be very cautious about rising river levels and anything that gets obstructed to block the water over the roadways. Turn around, don't drown. It sounds like a silly catchphrase, but it might just be what saves your life. Again, you may have to find another alternate zigzag, wibbly-wobbly route somewhere else to get to where you're going, but you will arrive alive. Drive into that water, and it may be the last mistake you ever make. Now, that right there is about as warning possibility strong wise as I can make it so again it's just not a good idea you wouldn't drive into a wildfire don't drive into an over a water covered roadway you don't even know as that water is rushing through there you don't even know if that roadway is still there or not that's serious you can't see it so don't risk it all you do is just plunge in the current takes you and you cannot get out of there you're trapped and quite possibly your life is at stake. So do not drive over water-covered roadways, please. Now, what we've got is, again, these developing thunderstorms here. Plenty of moisture, jet stream coming on through, helping to irritate the atmosphere, providing that energy, and that's what we need to get this situation set up into the rest of the day. Let's time things out and show you more about what's going on. Again, through this afternoon, the heaviest possibility of rain and thunderstorms in the brighter colors, yellow, orange, red, back toward this direction. So by noon, most of the Mid-South should be looking at rain, but there could be some thunderstorms developing in there into and around uh, the area. Becky Metz, get on with the seven-day forecast. Patience, we'll get to you in just a little bit, and thank you for tuning in, by the way. Uh, Debbie Jones, what time is this starting in Memphis? Here we go. Again, more information on that. Thank you very much to everybody for checking in for right now. Currently, again, not seeing much of anything happening just yet. It's later this afternoon as we go toward about the area in and around 3 o'clock and afterwards. If you're in eastern Arkansas, this is where we see that squall line starting to set up and move our direction. It gets set up here from around St. Louis down to about Little Rock, more or less, and then it starts to move our direction. It looks like it's going to be through eastern Arkansas by about News Channel 3 at 5. It looks like it's probably going to be into the metro area or getting close to that somewhere around News Channel 3 at 6. And again, anywhere along this line, we can see the possibility of different types of severe weather. main thing we're looking for is, again, the potential for damaging winds and then also isolated tornadoes. That's what we're going to be seeing again throughout the course of the rest of the day here when this moves on through. Beforehand, rain and some thunderstorms, and that's going to be about it. Now, through about News Channel 3 at 10, the line is going to be crossing through the Mid-South. So right before News Channel 3 at 10, we should be seeing the storm heading into northwest Middle Tennessee and down into the southwestern parts of the viewing area here, crossing through the metro. And then by midnight, basically everything is going to be done and heading away Away from the area. So right now, it doesn't seem like it's going to be sticking around for a while. It may be a slow mover, taking about six hours to clear the Mid-South, but it does not look like we're going to be getting this thing sticking around overnight at least. I think by midnight, pretty much everything is going to be finished up. And then by the time we hit daybreak tomorrow, that's going to be it for the rainfall. And by lunchtime, should be again cleared out. Now, there is a possibility late Sunday evening that we could pick up a few sprinkles with another minor system just rolling on through. Doesn't really look like much taking place at this point in time, so it doesn't really look like a huge possible problem into and around the area at this point. Now, here's the forecast. This was updated just a couple of hours ago from the Storm Prediction Center. They issue these things on a hour-by-hour -hour basis. Usually about every four to five hours, a new forecast comes out. So the next one, as of right now, time being in the red bar, about 9:19. We probably will see another forecast coming up here within about 90 minutes. So if you're watching this netcast around, say, noon or so, check in with our websites and we'll have more details as to what may be happening out there, a little bit more updates on this. But the basic bottom line is we are in this bullseye for the possibility of severe weather. Less of a chance in the marginal green and the slight yellow the enhanced area right here, again, that's kind of the middle grounds of where we have severe weather. It's not exactly a huge outbreak, but it's not exactly a marginal popcorn thunderstorm situation shaping up either at this point in time. So in this area, 
We could see the potential of mainly damaging winds. We could also, slightly less but still possible, see the potential of isolated tornadoes. That's going to be the main, again, threats for tonight. There's going to be a better possibility of hail back down toward the Arklatex area. We could see some hail here, but the main threat is mainly away from us. Now, also, again, we've had a lot of rainfall, which means that the tree roots in the ground are going to be kind of able to wobble back and forth. Some of those trees are not going to be able to stand up against that very strong thunderstorm wind. So I'm anticipating we could see some damage from thunderstorm winds, trees toppling onto houses and cars and stuff like that. So that may be a safety concern for later on tonight. Again, this will update into and around the area coming up at about maybe 11 o'clock this morning. I'll bring you updates on that on social media, so stay tuned for more as we go throughout the rest of the next several days. Melissa Elam Kader, I feel like I live in Seattle. It's been decently soggy out there, no question about that. Wendy Liu, your no rain dance did no good. I'll leave it up to you. I have two left feet, and I can only do the tango in certain circumstances, so thank you very much for that one. Uh, Crockett County, Sheila Gilliland, will it get bad here? Well, there's that potential of severe weather all the way across the area into and around the rest of the forecast, again, from the area. And thanks a lot to everybody else, again, for tuning in for what we're seeing again for later on tonight. Now, rainfall, again, we've had a decent amount on here. We could wind up with another huge amount of rainfall in a very small area. Boot Hill, northeast Arkansas, where that heavy rainfall comes on down. The rest of the area does not need this rainfall. I think we're closing in on nine inches of rain for February. We don't need any more rain. So this right here could start to cause some more problems, especially as all of this makes its way into the Mississippi Channel. So we could see, again, some more flash flooding out of this, especially with estimates like this showing up later on. That's a lot for one area in one evening, so something to consider there. Now, getting into the rest of the forecast. There we go. Thank you very much, computer. Back into the area here, Frugendas Fact Finder 2000, everybody. Now we're looking again at, just kidding, it's a WSI Max. Now we got, again, the showers and thunderstorms. We could get thunder at just about any point in time. I think the best severe weather chance is going to be around dinner time tonight, moving into the Mid-South about 3 o'clock, moving out of the Mid-South into and around the midnight area. We'll run through that timing here in just a little bit for everybody uh, tuning on in in just a little bit so you can see more about what's going on. Here's what we look at again for tomorrow. Cooler possibility of some rain early in the morning, but then, and this should be, a, I don't know why that's setting back again, that should be a p.m. right there. Could be some scattered showers late Sunday evening. No severe weather anticipated, just maybe some light drizzle, and that's going to be about it. Good news, we get back to sunshine on Monday, and things look much more confident again for some drying conditions Monday into Tuesday. Not quite so good news, Wednesday into Thursday, we see that potential of thunderstorms and the National Weather Service is showing signs of potential of severe weather here as well. It's still, again, several days out, so we're going to have to monitor this. The signs are coming together, but we can't say with certainty that we're going to get a severe weather forecast for right now. But usually when things like this start popping up this far ahead, it's definitely something to pay attention to. So keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for that. After that... Here's some really good news, and I don't mind giving people good news. You can bet on that. We see, again, a lot of dry conditions out there. Pleasant temperatures, cool during the day, bit chilly at night, but not exactly wintertime. And more importantly, those blue boxes right there, goose eggs for rainfall. So we finally start to dry out across much of the area. Let me go back to the time uh, stamps here and give you an idea as to what we're looking for, for those of you who are just tuning back in for a little bit more out there. If you're, again, having trouble seeing what's going on, West Tennessee here, Dyersburg, back toward Bolivar, Memphis, Eastern Arkansas, the Boot Heel of Missouri is right up around here, Northern Mississippi down here, south of the Tennessee state line, east of the Mississippi River, so that gives you a little orientation. Again, sometimes these maps are a little hard to read. I'm used to them, but not everybody of you out there is, so this might help you uh, get a little bit more triangulation as to where you are. Eastern Arkansas, I think, is going to see the main problems first. As we go past lunchtime today, we start to see, again, the potential of these thunderstorms getting a little bit more well-organized as these things shape up into a squall line fairly short-lived but can be very powerful storms, especially from storms that are embedded inside the rain inside that line. This is where things start to set up around about mid-afternoon. Note, 
east of the Mississippi River, we don't have a lot going on. West Tennessee, North Mississippi, even southeast Arkansas is not really seeing all that much at this point. Now, going forward a couple more hours, heading to around, let's say, 5.30, 6 o'clock. Boot Hill, Missouri, I-55 west down toward I-40 from the Missouri Boot Hill down into around northeast Arkansas. Squall line still has not made its way across the Mississippi River, and that includes North Mississippi as well. So East Arkansas continues to be the main target for there. We get into around 7 o'clock tonight, and that is where that line starts making its way across the metro area. Far west counties of Tennessee will see some of this, and then maybe around northwest Mississippi at about 7 o'clock tonight. Going a little farther after this mows on through the metro area, and then we have, again, the possibility of this squall line through about northwest middle Tennessee down to southeastern Arkansas, going east of the Mississippi as we head just before News Channel 3 at 10. That's going to be, again, what we see for the potential of this. Now, the timing of this, this is one computer model's opinion. And again, so far, this is one of the best models we have, the HRRR high-resolution rapid refresh. What we have with this data gives us an idea in a short-term fashion what may be happening. So this is about as really down-to-the-minute brass knuckles or brass tacks, I guess, effect. Brass, where did that come from? Anyway, brass tax effect that everything here tonight is going to be again moving through on about this time frame but if you are in the met wherever you are in the mid south area Today, no matter what time it is, it's time to pay attention to the weather because this could move through sooner. It could lollygag a little bit farther back to the west of us and then move through overnight. But right now, the conventional weather wisdom is it's going to be heading through about dinner time tonight and going into West Tennessee as we head through about early to mid-evening. Now, about midnight or so, still around the area, but leaving northwest Mississippi, northwest Alabama, northeastern areas of Mississippi, and back into around middle Tennessee. So most of the area should not see much of a problem. In fact, the winds coming in from out of the west are going to bring in a bunch of dry air. So by the time we're on the air with News Channel 3 Daybreak, lingering showers across west Tennessee and northern Mississippi, and then clearing skies. into. We may even see some sunshine tomorrow. That would be kind of cool. And then tomorrow night, we may see that possibility of maybe some more problems with a few showers, but that's going to be about all that we see uh, into and around the area for tonight. Grady Bennett, check your gutters and waterways. Very good idea. Yes, you can call the city and complain about that, but far easier to go out and scoop that stuff out of the drains to make certain all your neighbors and you don't have flooding problems. So again, like a Boy Scout, do a good turn daily. It's not going to hurt you. Just get your hands dirty for a little bit right there. Foggy, 67, off and on rain showers. Rebecca Bagwell, thank you very much from that from Maynard, Arkansas. Thank you very much. Uh, Tess Bryant, northern Arkansas. Again, that's where we're going to be seeing most of the rainfall coming through first by the time we hit about lunchtime into around 3 o'clock this afternoon. And then most of the rest of the area will see showers and thunderstorms. But I would see, again, keeping an eye on safety more than anything else at this point in time, that we're going to be seeing more of this throughout the rest of the day. Uh, Rhonda Chapman Bringle, Tunica. We have to be there for a race. You're going to have rain off and on throughout the rest of the day, and you're going to have those lightning strikes. You're going to have some embedded thunderstorms out there at various uh, points in time in and around the Mid-South, but that looks like it's going to be moving through uh, the Tunica area. The main squall line should be in your area around 6 to 8 o'clock for tonight at this time. Brandy Merriman, major tornado threat. Not specifically what you would call major, but again, when you have an enhanced risk of severe weather, this is not a severe weather outbreak like what we saw on February 5th, 2008, where you have like a high risk. Not seeing that for right now. It's still, again, a little bit on the iffy side that we're going to see some very powerful weather, but this is issued for the potential that is seen out there. And that's the reason why we have to, again, let you know that there's going to be a possibility of this stuff happening. So this is something that we need to uh, let you know about that. Randy Adams, thank you very much for the kind words uh, at this point in time. Keith Turbot, again, as we've been saying so far, looks like it's going to be mainly into this afternoon 
and early this evening that we see this developing back to the west of us and then moving into the rest of the Mid-South as we go throughout the dinner hour and through early parts of Saturday night. So again, this could be a bit of a problem in there. Uh, let's see, Marie Barker Hines, Dallas area usually comes uh, they there about eight hours later. Yes, timing on this, again, I don't think it's going to be quite that quick, but it is a good indication that you see the storms moving on through there. Dallas could get some of this tail section coming up here uh, in just a little bit at this point in time. Uh, Kenneth Bogart, live in the boot heel, fifth wheel. Should I not be in it tonight after 7 p.m.? Again, after I, I cannot recommend anything in the way of personal actions. Legally, I cannot do that. But I can tell you that about that time frame, that's where the storms are going to be coming through the boot heel. So again, it, this is the time right now. That's a very good question. Again, uh, from where did it go? Kenneth Bogart, that's a very good question to ask. Where is your severe weather place? I mean, seriously, think about that for a second. Where do you need to go to to protect yourself from severe weather? We have a bit of a hardened tornado shelter that way down the hallway close to the edit bays that we can all scramble into should we get something here in downtown Memphis. If you live in an apartment building, do you know where to go to? If you are working in, like, say, a warehouse or a large open uh, type facility like a, a church, a synagogue, anything in a place of worship that has a very high roof structure. Those things are terrible for tornadoes and high winds. And it doesn't take much. It only takes like an F1, uh, EF1 category tornado to cause a roof to collapse. We've seen numerous proofs of that before. Uh, if you're going to be out and about, again, you cannot stay in your vehicle. Your vehicle is designed to be in motion. And that means the tornado or whatever the winds can do can throw that thing around wherever and however it wants to. And you're on the inside of that thing. You're going to be, again, knocked around and quite possibly killed. So you need to find something else, a sturdy building, a ditch or a culvert somewhere near the side of the roadway. Because if you're in that ditch or the culvert, then the debris and everything else will go right over the top of you. If you're standing up in that culvert, then you know, you're going to be hit by a lot of possible debris places. But right now is the time to, again, figure out where you need to go to. Once again, not panicking. I'm an Eagle Scout. I don't panic people. I plan and prepare, and I would like to think that I help you do the same. So again, for tonight, cell phones getting charged, getting ready to go, making certain you have, again, an idea as to what the weather's going to be like, keeping it tuned to News Channel 3, again, to the weather experts, and we'll be giving you updates throughout the rest of the day, either on air or online, so we'll have a ton of information there available for you. We're going to have to let my computer cool off here for just a little bit, but once again, this whole thing moving through the area as we go through about early this evening, again, about dinner time somewhere in there, earlier for Arkansas, later for just to the east of the Mississippi River. And yes, there could be the possibility, excuse me, of some tornadoes in there as well. So we do need to be watching that uh, very carefully in the area for right now. Uh, Melissa and Frost, FedEx, I don't understand the reference, but again, thank you very much. Uh, for checking in. Nikki Clevenger, thank you very much for the uh, kind words on that. I do appreciate that. Thank you for stopping by, and thank you everybody else for tuning in. Wendy Liu, don't need no, no, don't need no tomatoes or tornadoes. I can't see what that is, but I could use some tomatoes. I could use a nice salad right about now if I'm thinking about it. Anyway, stay tuned to News Channel 3. We'll have more, again, throughout the course of the rest of the afternoon. Currently in the Mid-South, we do not have anything going on that involves severe weather. No advisories. National Weather Service does not have any outlooks for us at this point in time. We will have an updated information statement coming up within about, I would guess, about the next 90 minutes because this will be updated several times throughout the rest of the day. You can get this forecast, again, by going to the Storm Prediction Center. It's freely available, tons of information available about what, when, where, stuff like that. And, of course, we'll keep you updated here locally, so stick around for more on that. And, again, main start time, anywhere after about 3 o'clock out west, moving through the metro about 6 to 7, and then into the eastern parts of the viewing area by about 10 o'clock tonight. Stick around for a lot more. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik, live and direct from downtown Memphis. We'll have a lot more coming up later on tonight on News Channel 3, on air and online.